So how long was, do you think, from going to Alcoholics Anonymous that first day to recovery and then you kicked yourself into Value Rater? What sort of time span are we talking here? Well, Value Rater was, uh, Value Rater was still live during this period. Um, so I was still doing some, some tipping, but the main concentration was obviously on my recovery. As I said, I, I threw myself into not just helping myself, but part of uh, recovery work is about helping others. Uh, so I did a lot of uh, voluntary work with a company called Turning Point, um, which is great because what you, you need a reminder regular that you're an alcoholic because what happens is after a period of time, it kids you into thinking, you're, I'm okay now, maybe it was because of all that. So by helping other people, you get to see firsthand all the time you just think oh yeah I remember what, how bad that was and those feelings and you know and how that was so I guess value rater was kind of at a point where I was looking to expand it um, and last year obviously new gambling laws and what have you and how you marketed yourself was getting fairly difficult and I was getting knocked back by various marketing agencies not that because I was doing any wrong but it was just that the word gambling was becoming um, a bit of a dirty word in those networks so I needed to um, have a think round to how I could really launch value rate and how I could um, really get my message across so um, lots of planning went into what is now the value rate rating club which is um, is based it's, um, it's for relevant content for uh, horse racing enthusiasts. Okay, so without making it an advertorial, what, what is what is value rater now? What is, if someone signs up to it, it's free? I understand. What? Um yeah, it's complete. It's completely free of charge, and I think some people think, well, what's the catch with it? But it is. Um, they sign up to a newsletter. We've got various journalists that um, write for us, and I hope we've got a nice balance of um, people. We have paddock notes. We have a all weather uh, all weather service. Um, we have reviews, previews for the for the big festival, um, but also with that, I'm really passionate uh, within horse racing to recognise that for the future good of the game, I th I'm getting really quite annoyed that I think on race courses, don't get me wrong, it's really important that we have big concerts on racetracks but I'm a member to a lot of racetracks and when I go around and speak to people that are going about their professional business the main complaint is well there's nothing really for us or nothing really to be um, catered for so what I did with Value Rater is I made a decision that I wanted to look into some race course sponsorship um, and I had some big knockbacks you know I went to a lot of race courses and I was told that, that, that their customers don't really want that you know and uh, I saw it as contempt without investigation really um, and I boxed on um, and eventually arrived um, at Bath um, with open arms and all of a sudden they got what I was trying to uh, try and achieve really and all our objectives um, fit into place. So you, you sponsor very low grade races. Yeah. Now, are those the sort of races you would recommend punting on? No. Um, you know, there's t there's two hats to that. You know, obviously, with the racing club, because I'm principal partner at Bath, we do focus on there. You know, if I think it's fair to say, if you're serious about your punting, um, probably, unless you're well informed it's probably the quickest way to go skint betting on low, gla low class racing just simply because the horses are inconsistent um, from one day to the next but what I am passionate about is um, the sport in general as a whole and you know you only have to look at the big days on racetracks the prize money that's fine you know they're being looked after but what about the lower end you know where's the sport going to be in years to, years to come if we're not looking after the grassroots you know, I'm not so sure at the moment how attractive it is for an owner coming into the sport looking at the prize money. So when I came to Bath, which was literally initially just to sponsor a race, to ra raise some awareness to the racing club, 
it kind of snowballed um, and through our conversations um, and the passion they, they told me about they had the sprints and stairs series which is for horses classes uh, class five and six um, which obviously is a £17,500 prize money at the finals and it kind of fit all my objectives and what I was trying to do really so I was keen um, you know and I'm sponsoring that um, series this year. So how do you how do you monetize this? Yeah so obviously with, within that we have um, four from the top which uh, is a service which is just five pound a day um, and I made four from the top really it's four bets from best pro punters Wednesday to Saturday cost five pound for four bets and it's aimed at people who may be coming racing haven't got the time to read that they can have a bet and they get a multiple bet you know it's it's classed as a bit of fun so there's obviously monetization from there and the all weather service you know it's completely free of charge but obviously if people read the content and might think to themselves you know what that's going to fit in uh, with me and quite often with the racing club it's not all about tipping winners you know what I'd like to think it is is a digital toolbox for me or you Simon that may think well we want to get someone else's perspective on things you know and to factor into their own thought process so I guess value rate is moved from just being a hard-nosed tipping service to actually being something that anyone can use is a bit of a handy hint to, to factor into their own um, their own thoughts really and within that I'm obviously looking I think within racing I think we would all agree that the most important thing is is to encourage people into the sport. So the other side to value rate what we're doing is some very um, basic videos um, which would you know would seem to me and you probably that you know I'm te trying to teach people to stack eggs but I think it's fair to say that for example Lingfield last week there was 10,000 people there for a concert night I can probably guarantee you that 90% of them wouldn't know how to read a race day program wouldn't know to have a bet with an on-course bookmaker and I think if the race courses and it is really important for the race courses to monetize and have these concerts but also I think it's important that we share that leisure money amongst the bookmakers for the sake of things like um, the levy and if to, to create an experience for the race goer because I'm concerned that it's so niche um, at the moment where you know real hard-nosed racing fans it's such a small niche that in years to come what's going to happen then you know you know we need to I think try and sell the sport I don't mean getting people into necessary read and form and that but if they're going to come to the races to fully engage in the day rather than just coming for a sing and a dance okay now you told me that you've been a full-time form student obviously yeah to what you already do which sort of encompasses it for the last two years and you've been winning for the last two yeah. years what is your angle and your winning edge for your personal punting yeah well i guess probably two years ago value rate was at a stage i brought an operations manager in and had some people come to work for me and the plan was once i had the business at a certain stage i wanted to go back onto the track again one because um, I love it and secondly it would only benefit the racing club um, to have some of my um, analysis added to it. Um, nowadays I think like most people I'm on the exchanges I don't personally have a bet unless I'm at the races which has improved my returns massively. Um, my angle is a lot more smaller meetings now uh, mainly because of the workload I mean, I can spend anything from 10, 12 hours a day now reading form for the meetings that I'm actually going to. So where before I used to just use my form and then I'd see, get frustrated when horses perhaps didn't run and couldn't understand it. But by being on track, I think it's your only edge you've got now um, because you can factor all the form you've got into to see what you've got around the paddock. And most of my angle now, Simon, is to actually identify horses, not necessarily on that day, but I try and find horses around the paddock that I think have been overphased or out of their class. I'll put them then into the tracker and wait until they're dropped. And then I've got lots of horses in the tracker and I kind of follow their career through. And then if I fancy um, a particular horse, think they're in right, I then travel to that race course to make a point to go in there and back in it. My turnover of bets is a lot less, but my profit has been it's massive now but um, 
I've gone past the days of feeling that I, you know, unless you've had a win on the day, it's been successful. You know, there's so much to learn from coming punting around the paddock. Um, it's quite surprised me because when I was punting on track before, it was more really all about the form. But since I've been taken and inactive in the paddock, even down to watching them go down to the post um, and getting familiar with the horses and their traits, it's been massive. And also, I think if I go racing now on a Saturday afternoon, everyone's eyes on it. You know, there's no edge that I can find where I find myself quite often, especially in the winter, the all weather tracks, you know, I love it um, because not so many eyes are on it. And if not so many eyes are on it, there's more chance that I'm going to find something that someone's made a mistake for. Um, and that is very difficult, you know, and I think not to say that being a pro punter you know you, you can't make money with you know you can't make money but i don't think you can make the money like you did once before but it is a case of nowadays everything's got to be right for me and if i get to the race and the price is gone i don't back it now but um it's hours of form watching replays of videos um but yeah and, and more so my head right now you know where before a good day would have been down the pub, a bad day would have been down the pub. You know, my life is completely different now. And the importance is, I think, I mean, I'm sure he won't mention, you know, mind me mention, but Alan Francis, who I speak to regular on track, you know, Hello, Alan, yeah. you need to be, if everyone was like Alan, you know, it's just level. You wouldn't know meeting Alan if he's had a good day, bad day, but you've got to stay that kind of level, you know, because if once you think you've got the game, sort it out the next day I just quickly remind you that you happen and I just think you've got to be consistent in what you're doing and accept that I accept now that I'm going to be wrong much more than I'm ever going to be right and that was a big change in my punting as well is because if you start getting your mindset oh god I've had I don't know how many losers um, but it's about making profit at the end of the day and I always say that if I ever back it whenever I back a loser I'd have always learnt something from backing that loser whether it be the horse is no good or whether it's because physically the horse was no good or maybe I need to look at that form again you know it always pays you somewhere but the majority of my punting now without a doubt is from identifying horses around the paddock that I think um, have the ability to win the race not necessarily that one you know a lot of people will say to me around the paddock I say oh I like that horse and they say you're talking about that can't win this you know but that's what I like because I'm I'm putting it in the tracker and waiting for the day when I think it is in the right race and by that time providing not too many as have seen that you know I'll get a nice price about it right and um, you're obviously focused you're still a relatively young man 40 Simon 40 that's just turned 40 what how do you see yourself in five years what would you ideally what would you like to be doing Will it involve professional punting, value rater? What, what, what's your ambition for the next five years? Yeah, I'm really passionate about, you know, value rater is growing. I'm investing um, heavily into race course sponsorship. And I want to be someone that is not just taken out of the game. I want to be seen someone that is putting into the game. And I will continue. I'm committed to do that. I've already committed with a hefty investment um, this year into um, race course sponsorship and videos and such like and next year there's um, I plan to increase that that budget and, and work with the race courses um, you know for, for the good of the sport I would like to I just like to see more people engage in the sport um, and by being on the race courses and having uh, conversations with the race courses I'm beginning to learn you know different people's perspectives it's really important um, so I hope to do some good um, for the sport and continue growing um, value rater and in turn I'm always going to be racing I'm always going to be um, I'm always going to be around you know that the only place I feel I feel okay actually is being racing and, and doing my form I don't like sitting around I don't do holidays very well um, although it's important that I have them um, I guess I'm addicted to my work now um, that addictive gene I guess that I've got in me somewhere hasn't gone away but I channel it and focus it in areas where now I hope I can be ever helped. Brilliant. Well best of luck Matt, Matt Mitter. Thank, Thank you, very you very much, much Simon.